text objects. So you aren't limited to just 3D things. So if you did a nice um, menu screen and you wanted to bring in objects, you could lay them out first and then use, um, say, move from to pull them into position. Uh, rotate, um, the iTunes rotate methods do not work on GUI textures because you cannot rotate a GUI texture by default, uh, nor, nor can you rotate text. Uh, but enough, enough rambling, let me show you what loop does as opposed to ping pong for the loop type. If you notice, it kind of jumps back because the loop literally returns it to where it was originally and then plays the animation again. It does the same thing for a move or um, a scale as well. It'll kind of jump back to where it was and it'll go, it'll, it'll replay the animation you asked it to play originally. Okay. <clears throat> Rotate by. Um, there is, by the way, a scale by um, and a scale add, which you can take a look at in the documentation. They're just uh, subtle ways of uh, manipulating the math on, on your scales. Um, but in this case, um, I wanted to bring attention to rotate by because it is actually a multiplier of 360 degrees. So in this example, um, we're going to rotate on the Y axis um, two times 360, so it'll, it'll spin 720 degrees. If you went ahead and said um, 0.5, it'll spin, uh, f um, sorry, 90, I'm sorry, 180 degrees, because it's gonna be half of 360. Um, I also took it took the time to put in uh, an example here of showing you how you can change the uh, an easing curve that is put on the animation. And so this will kind of pull itself back and then it'll flip through the animation. So let me show you. Fade. All right. <clears throat> Fade. Before I get into it, you'll notice I have a little note here, um, which is a good thing to, to remember. Um, Fade um, will work on uh, GUI textures and text as well, but you need to remember that when you put this on um, some geometry, the, um, the material you're utilizing on that geometry has to have the ability to calculate transparency. This isn't anything all that complex, which I'll show you in a second, but keep this in mind because there's been a lot of instances where, where I have actually tried to throw out an eye tween fade to and wondered why nothing's happening, and it's because there's no transparency in the material, and let me show you what happens. If I run that, you see nothing, even though it tried to do what it needed to do. So if we go ahead and change the material which right now is diffuse if we change it to a transparent diffuse we'll lose our pretty shadow which is a bummer but it will fade away because now the material on this object is calculating transparency all right and again same thing from for fade from it'll bring it it'll bring it in from from not even being visible whoops like that ta-da and I had a delay on that, uh, nothing special. Just wanted to bring attention to the fact that you can use all these things throughout uh, the iTween library. Uh, I'm gonna put my diffuse back on here just because I really like shadows. Okay, color. Color two. Color can affect um, R, G, and B. Uh, it's a multiplication of the current values. So what this is gonna do is pump up the red value um, just to get your creativity uh, flowing. This would be great for, say, if you had two characters and uh, or a character period and it got hurt or impacted and you wanted to kind of show that visually, um, and you could go ahead and use this. If you notice, the red color ramps up like that. Um, let's go back to it. Uh, just to get even more of an example of how you could utilize this tool, you could ramp up the red like I just did and then put a fade to with a ping pong to kind of make it flash in and out as if the character were kind of um, uh, invincible for a moment and then you could stop that tween after a while. So I'm just showing you how you can kind of chain these tools together. And again, this time we'll multiply the green and we'll ping pong it. And, uh, this should get your creativity going for, say, power-ups or, or pickups. As you can see, this is pretty easy to put something together like this, and uh, you can easily draw attention to a pickup or, or 
an, uh, an item in a game. Okay. All right, movement. This one's this one's pretty easy. It's actually the easiest of all of them, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and move something along the x-axis. Okay. Let's go ahead and use move from, which, as I've said, is a method for setting up a, a, a situation. As you can see, it kind of shot itself back and, and brought itself to where it was originally. Um, all right. This is a new feature. Um, the Bezier curves in iTween are, are, are incredibly functional and just add so much drama um, to your, uh, your animations. Um, there is another example on the iTween website which um, should help you kind of try out some of what is available. But um, I'll show you a very simple example right here. Basically, you throw a Bezier argument into um, move to Bezier and you supply it with vector threes. You can give it as many as you want. And these vector threes um, will create a curve that kind of um, curves in and out of these points to create a path for the object to follow upon. Um, and I also included a couple little things you can add to tweak this to kind of get a more dramatic um, visual look of how the actual object follows through them. So with this setup right here, this example, which is only one, two, three, four um, vector threes, uh, we can move an object in a circle. And let me show you that in action. Pretty cool with very little code. Um, and if you notice, I have this orient to path false. Um, what that does, by default, iTween um, Bezier will actually cause your object to look in the direction it's moving. Let me skip the one that's right there and I'll show you this. This um, Bezier call does not have that uh, oriented path because it's um, true by default. And let me show you what happens. This is actually kind of kind of neat. As you can see, the box kind of walks in the direction it's going. All right, and then let's uh, show you one more thing you can do. You can also set a look at, and basically it's um, just a point in space that the object will look at as it's moving along this path. This is really good for um, dramatic camera movements or the head of a character as you're moving it along a path so we can kind of look at where it's going to end up or something of special interest. And that's very easily set by look at. Um, if you did have orient to path uh, um, on, a look at will um, nullify that value. So just, just to let you know, look at will override the orient to path. And let me show you that.